Good morning. Welcome to Mass, streamed live from All Saints Church here in Gladstone, Michigan. To prepare for the celebration of the Eucharist, join me in turning your whole heart to God. Let's begin. Good morning. Welcome to All Saints Church. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings are found on page 816. Please join in our opening song, number 387, All Creatures of Our God and King, number 387. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have, mer have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up ate and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice and be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over to us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven. Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
The passage that we just heard from the Gospel of John is in many ways about as Catholic as it gets. Christ is talking about the bread from heaven, describing that he truly is the bread of life in comparison to the manna which had been given to the Israelites in the Old Testament. If you think back to last weekend, this conversation between the crowds and Christ started right after the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves, where the people, who were absolutely astounded by what had just happened, ask Christ for a sign to confirm their suspicions about who he is. And in response, he promises them bread from heaven. And the people say, please give us this bread probably expecting something along the lines of the manna from the time of Moses. But today, Christ astonishes them once again. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. As Catholics, we know that the flesh he's referring to, he would give us in the Eucharist the blessed sacrament that we receive at Mass, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. This is one of the passages in Scripture that informs what we believe about the Eucharist, and it demonstrates why we make such a big deal about the Eucharist, why we do things like genuflecting to the tabernacle upon entering a church, why we take care to purify the sacred vessels used at Mass, so that particles of the Blessed Sacrament aren't left forgotten. It's why we place so much emphasis on who can even receive Holy Communion in the first place. Now, all of these practices, they tend to focus on our outward actions, right? And because our outward actions are very important. But what's even more profound is the way in which the Eucharist changes us spiritually. The Church has a lot to say about the Eucharist, and one of those things is that the Eucharist is the source and summit of the entire Christian life. The source and the summit. That's a bold phrase, and it's a phrase that we should take seriously. So what does it mean for the Eucharist to be the source of the Christian life? Well, we know that baptism is how one becomes Christian, right? So the Eucharist isn't the origin of Christianity in one's life. Instead, an analogy that I find helpful is to think about the source of a creek or a stream. You might hear someone say that the source of a stream is high up in some hills or in the mountains, fed by runoff or melting glaciers. And the Eucharist is the source of Christian life in this kind of way the font of grace which overflows into the fruit that we produce through our lives. And just like how a small creek might flow down a hill and flow into a huge lake, the graces that we receive from the Eucharist can achieve great things in us. Now in thinking about this, we know that the Lord instituted the Eucharist as something that we eat, right, as food, physically eating his body, blood, soul, and divinity hidden behind what appears to be bread and wine. Because of this reality, the great theologian Thomas Aquinas describes the Eucharist as spiritual food, providing for our spiritual life in much the same way that physical food provides for our physical bodies. When we receive our Lord sacramentally, It helps us to conform our hearts to his. The Eucharist, again, is the body of Christ, given to us for our spiritual nourishment. It's the source of Christian life. So each time we consume the Eucharist, we receive what we need to grow in greater unity with Christ. The Old Testament points to this as well. In the manna which fed the Israelites during their wanderings in the desert, because Just as that bread from heaven, that manna, provided physical nourishment for the Israelites, it strengthened their bodies. The Eucharist strengthens us with spiritual nourishment during our time on earth. And Jesus himself makes this claim 
when describing himself as the true bread from heaven. That's why the reception of Holy Communion is so important. If we want to grow as Christians, we need this spiritual nourishment the Lord provides in his body and in his blood. So one of the best ways to grow in this spiritual life is through the worthy reception of Holy Communion. So if that's a way in which we can think about the Eucharist as the source of Christian life, then what about the summit? Well, if you're climbing up a hill or a mountain, the summit is the highest point, right? And the destination. So thinking that way, we could say that the Eucharist certainly is the highest point in the Christian life. It's where we receive the real presence of God. But we can also speak about the Eucharist as a destination, the place that we're trying to go. Because after all, what's our goal as Christians? It's to get to heaven, right? It's to be with God. And if you think about it, in that and in our reception of the Eucharist, in being with God now, the Mass is the closest that we can get to heaven while still living on earth. The Exultet, which is the long chant sung at the beginning of the Easter Vigil every year, at one point we hear, O truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth. And while this line certainly applies beautifully to the night of Christ's resurrection, you could say the same thing for each and every Mass, where the things of heaven are wed to those of earth. In heaven, we look forward to the beatific vision. We look forward to seeing God face to face in his presence. But we're able to be in the presence of Jesus now in the Eucharist, achieving, in a sense, heaven in a limited sense. So the Eucharist, each Mass, gives us a glimpse of eternal life, even if not perfectly, the destination of our Christian lives. It's a foretaste of the eternal communion with the Trinity that we look forward to. Now, all of that being said, truly believing in what the Eucharist is doesn't always come easily. The Eucharist is simultaneously one of the most important and demanding aspects of being Catholic. It's the source and summit of Christian life and something that we can only come to know through faith. And that's not unique to our time. As a little bit of a spoiler for next weekend, the crowds in the gospel are going to challenge Christ on what he means when he says his flesh is the bread from heaven. And some people are going to end up walking away from him because of what he teaches. So if you struggle at times to believe fully in what the Eucharist is, then you're not the first one and you're certainly not alone. But in that struggle... Ask for a deeper faith. Ask God to help your unbelief, to help you come to see that he truly is present for us here at the altar. Because ultimately the Eucharist, more than anything, is what makes us Catholic. You won't find the Blessed Sacrament at any other church in Gladstone. And it's in the Eucharist that we receive Christ, we receive the bread from heaven, his flesh given for the life of the world. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered here together in faith, let us offer our Heavenly Father our prayers and our petitions. Let us pray for the church, for an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially in the Diocese of Marquette. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that our government leaders may seek to defend the common good and may do so considering the good of all lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the poor, that the generosity of Christians may bring relief to their struggles and provide hope in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all the sick, that they may find merit in uniting their sufferings to Christ and be healed by the divine physician. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, especially members of our parish family, may our deceased parishioners and all the faithful departed rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today we offer this Mass especially for the people of All Saints Parish. For this intention, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, accept these prayers that we bring to your altar, along with those prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Answer them according to our need, and according to your most holy will. For we make them in faith through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 372. I know that my Redeemer lives, number 372. to see with my 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim.
We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church. 
and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me in making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly with you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing number 326, Eat This Bread, number 326.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements this morning. First of all, this coming Thursday, so Thursday this week, is a holy day of obligation. It's the Solemnity of the Assumption. So we'll be having Mass at 8.30, our normal little daily Mass time as in, in the morning, and also at 7 p.m. So hopefully one of those Mass times works well for you. And so again, Holy Day of Obligation Thursday, Mass at 8.30 a.m. or 7 p.m. We also, uh, if you're, a, minister, if you're a, a lecturer or an extraordinary minister or an altar server, there are sign-ups for those different ministries on the Holy Day in the lobby there on the side table. So please uh, see if there's available slots and fill those out if you could. Thank you for that. And then finally, just a reminder that registration is open for our Bible study course this fall. It's going to be a continuation of the Catholic Biblical School courses we offered last year. So if you were there, if you joined us last year and want to continue, or even if you didn't and you want to start with us this year, uh, just please see our parish website for details on how to register and, and additional information. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join in our closing song, number 405, O God Beyond All Praising, number 405.